train. Is your mic turned? Yeah, of course. Ben's very distracted by all the trains. This is a high noise level around here. Can you hear me out there? Okay, so this is third layer of GeoGrid. So you can see there's our bottom, our second layer of GeoGrid. He stacked up two courses. Now we're ready to core fill, fill up the cores of the block with clean stone. And you can see he put this, uh, this was six foot GeoGrid here, but he didn't need six feet of clean stone. So he packed himself some dirt in here so that his clean stone isn't just gonna roll away. So now he's gonna come in and we're gonna get a good you know, two and a half, some places, three feet of clean stone behind this wall. Technically, you could probably get away with less, but I'd prefer to do more rather than less. He's gonna core fill the block, bring this in here with level, with uh, clean stone, just like he did on here. Then we're gonna roll out the geo grid. If it's gonna take more dirt, we'll pack out some more dirt. Then we're ready to do our next two courses before we repeat the process. And you keep doing that until you've reached the height that you want of the wall. Just keep in mind that the higher your wall goes, the farther back your geogrid is gonna have to go. All right, Deed, bring in the clean stone. Hey, what's up guys? End of day three since we did the start of the construction of the wall. Uh, we did one, two, three, four, five courses today. We have four more courses to go and I'm looking at a completed wall tomorrow. DJ and Andrew were busy building wall today. I kept doing their steps so they could keep building wall and I'm done with that. Finally have nice flat Pretty much the whole way up there you can see three courses are still coming on out and another course on top of that one. The grade is a little lower here than there so the wall isn't going to be completely flat on the top. We're going to have to step it down two blocks. That's not going to be quite as nice. It would have been nice if it would have been level across the top so that it would have been nicer to run the fence. If the, But we're going to have to put steps in and it works. You can do fence and step. It's just a little harder to grade grass up against it, but we'll make it work. Is your mic turned? Yeah, of course. Ben's very distracted by all the trains. This is a high noise level around here. Can you hear me out there? A fine morning here in Crescent. Beautiful spring day. Our wall is pretty much complete. I still need to put be putting down cap. We got started with that yesterday. DJ has been gone the last two days. He was at, where were you DJ? Hartford. Connecticut at some kind of Hardscape Expo. Hardscape Expo in Hartford, Connecticut. So he's gathering all the ideas, the 
the wisdom that he needs to keep building these beautiful projects. He goes to those places, brings home a wealth of information, gives it to me, and I just stay here and make money. So I'm, I'm okay with that setup. So anyways, the last two days I slacked off a bit on filming. I'll give you a little update here. A wall is complete. We still need to do cap. We have Matt in here this morning with the big orange deuce on, grading out bank that we just built a year and a half ago. We had excellent progress up here the last two days. We did end up doing two steps down instead of having one completely level wall because I couldn't bring it up two more courses there. This wall is on the other side. I would have had to bring 20 inches of dirt over that deck, which doesn't work. So the only option was to step it down. The block is not double-sided, so I made it double-sided. double, double -sided. <laughs> Ended up cutting two corners in half, and yeah. Anyways, it'll work. We'll just bring a grade from up there down here. It's not gonna be too steep, won't be bad at all. So that's what we got going. Today we're gonna finish um, our capping of the wall, and we're gonna bring in, I got a tractor load of nice green topsoil over there. I filled in a bunch of fill dirt here yesterday and got us pretty close to our final grade. I'd say we're about four inches low still. So I'll bring in that nice loose soil and we'll rake it out nice and smooth, get ready to seed grass on the inside here. One of the things I'm going to do before I do that, I'm gonna cut strips of fabric to lay over top of this clean stone that I have going the whole way around there. The purpose for that is to keep dirt from migrating down through here. We don't put any against the back when we're bringing it up, but we do put it on the top and on the bottom so it doesn't clog up our drain system over time. What I'm going to use for that is just, you can use landscape fabric. I'm just going to use that geo textile fabric that we used underneath. It's going to separate the soil and the stone. Okay, so your wall is nearly finished. We have one last step of the wall. This is no structural purpose. This is just to make it look pretty. Let's talk a little bit about what we did so far. We dug excavation so that at least a block, at least a course of block is buried. When we were done digging, we compacted our subgrade. We put down a, a separation fabric to separate our stone from our, from our dirt. We compacted in six to eight inches of 2A. We squeezed out an inch of setting bed, we set and leveled our first row of block, and then we just built from there up. Every two courses, we were putting in GeoGrid. We went back with our GeoGrid as far as our wall was high, so four feet, six feet, so on. We have at least 12 inches of 2B clean stone behind the wall to provide drainage. We have a four inch corrugated perp pipe at the bottom of the wall to, so the water doesn't sit behind that wall. We have a wall drain down in there. So we have a lot of things, but we have one last thing to do. That's cap. So you'll see some walls that will do cap. Cap can be the same product. It can be a different product. When you're doing cap, I like to think about contrast. If I have a light wall, I might go with a dark cap. If I have a dark wall, I might go with a light cap to create color contrast. This type of wall will usually match the cap. This is not so much decorative retaining wall. It's just a, it's, it's an economy grade retaining wall. It's the kind of wall you build to level out your yard or create a garden or something like that. It's not really the kind of wall you use in an outdoor living space for a seating wall. So having said that, some people will put their cap on flush. In my opinion, it looks a lot better to get yourself a nice two inch overhang that's going to look good and it also provides an opportunity for you to put under cap lighting in if you want there's no lighting going in this wall but yeah just go ahead and get yourself a nice two inch overhang like that it's it's a rough face it's going to vary a little bit but we're pretty close there it's hard to get them on straight with a textured edge like this so what i'll often do and i'll show you that here in a minute i'll run a string line along the back i set a cap the way i want it out there I set a cap the way I want it down here and I'll run a string line across the back and then I'll just slide in my block until I touch the string line. Boom, then it's nice and straight. You don't see any wiggles in the top. Um, any other pointers for doing cap, Deej? No, I think you pretty much covered it. Ah, this wall is gonna get a fence put on top. So mm -hmm. you wanna make sure that these things are on nice and solid. Make sure it's clean, like always. Glue, we just use a brick stop. You can use any construction adhesive. 
it doesn't like dirt and it doesn't like wet block. So if you have dirt or wet block, it's just not as strong. You end up being able to just peel it off just like this right here. See that? Keeps talking about this when he laid block. Keep this brush handy. Make sure there's no dust on there, no dirt. Keep your grinder out in case you have a wobble. It doesn't like wet block and it doesn't like dirty block. So there you go.